Welcome back. Time to open up tonight's unsolved case file. This is the part of the program where we ask for your help. I mean, if you know anything related to this case, please pick up the phone tonight. It's been too long. This is four years ago that Hunter Good uh, was shot and killed. We believe it was a, a home invasion. It was horrific, and it is an unsolved case. The family doesn't have answers. The family doesn't have justice, both of which they deserve. Chelsea Donovan from our great affiliate WTKR in Norfolk, Virginia, has the story of Hunter Good. His face is posted to telephone poles, stapled to trees, and taped up on any surface the family could find. You walk past something like that, and you're like, wait, what? Ten grand? How can I get that? In bright red, a $10,000 reward for the arrest and the conviction of the person responsible for killing Hunter Good, Holly Good's brother. Hunter was like that person that was always like being silly um, and you know, caring. Three years ago, November 14th, 2018, Hunter was playing video games with his roommate inside his pavilion court townhome. There was a knock at the door. Hunter opened the door, saw someone, and basically tried to push him out with his body. That's when he was shot multiple times as his fiance slept upstairs. The person who pulled the trigger ran. A home invasion turned deadly. I think it was something that people that he knew that didn't like him or somebody some people that somebody had a problem with him sent over to just to intimidate two years ago the family held a press conference with police holly then pleading for someone to come forward we're beyond ready for justice we're beyond ready for closure now three years after the murder the family desperate papering neighborhoods with hunter's picture yearning for someone to speak up more of hopes that people would have maybe seen something or heard something um, that night or a few days later and just didn't know what they what was being said didn't know what it was about or saw something on their camera a family at a standstill but working to raise awareness and keep hunter's face and name out there there's still no suspect or person of interest just step up like be a good person and reach out and do the right thing um, you know, even if you know these people or know who did it. Okay, we've got a phone number for you tonight. It's 888-562-5887. That's the Virginia Beach Crime Line. You can also call 1-888-LOCK-YOU-UP. Um, please make the call if you have any information. It could be third degree, uh, third degree uh, hearsay, right? It doesn't matter. If you heard someone say something that somebody told somebody that told somebody. It doesn't matter. You got a piece of information, make the call. Uh, still with us tonight, former special agent charged from the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, Trabor Randall, and private investigator Jason Jensen. And joining us now in Sunbury, North Carolina, special guest, Hunter's dad, uh, Charlie, is with us. Uh, Charlie, thanks so much uh, for being here tonight. And you've experienced what no parent ever, ever, ever wants to experience and our thoughts are with you, and we want you to get uh, some sense of justice and an answer in, in all of this. Um, have there been any new updates or leads in the case that you've heard of? No, sir. Uh, make calls numerous times. A lot of times I, don't, I do not get answers back from uh, my calls. Uh, it takes a few different texting, calling the detectives that are or were in charge at the time to get back with me and probably a couple, a month or so ago, uh, the last detective that I talked to, they have moved up in rank and uh, no good information. It was kind of a down for me, a big down, that it was almost like it's a cold case. It's, yeah, I mean, it's almost four years. They said they have nothing, and I mean, I'm, I'm the $10,000, nothing to me. I'll go up to $20,000. I'll do what I got to do. I, I, we need closure. Um, 
someone should and does know what had happened, I'm starting to think it might not have had, had something to do with Hunter himself. It could have been his roommate. It could, you know, some. It could have been something else for it to have gone the way it did. As I, mean, I you, as you can imagine, there's so many different thoughts going through my mind, and a lot of them you don't want to know about. But it's just. Um, it's it's baffling uh, for people not to have come up with uh, um, something for the detectives to go off of. I I, I agree with you, Charlie. Um, has the roommate been cooperative through the investigation, and and um, has he had he has interaction been. with the family as well? Not a lot, no, sir. He's moved out with uh, one of Hunter's old roommates that both of them live in North Carolina, and neither one of them, you don't see much of them at all. Um, they hard to hard to get in touch with and hard to talk to. Actually, I'm thinking about going out to see them myself to have a talk with them. And I did with both of them. Uh, they worked together. So both of them were roommates with Hunter at one time. And not much conversation between us. So I do have an address and I do you know, plan on going out and talking with, at least talking with them, you know. Absolutely. Um, I want to bring our, our other guests into the conversation, Charlie. Jason Jensen, private investigator. Uh, your thoughts tonight. This is four years now, and, and, and what, you're hearing, what I'm hearing from Charlie tonight is that he's, he's really afraid this has turned into a cold case that's just going to sit there and not going to be actively worked on. Right, right. And, you know, you were smart to point out the contrast with the earlier case. Yeah, this needs to be treated like a cold case even if it wasn't because you don't want it to become any colder four years is way too long already to have have justice to have to wait for it the thing that really st strikes me in this story that we've heard so far is the fact that there were roommates or a roommate present when this happened how come we don't have any descriptions of the assailants why don't we have any sketches released to the public or something so that the public can know who to call in because the further this goes away you know you got witnesses that can die or memories that can fade absolutely Trevor Randall we only have about 20 seconds uh, unfortunately left in the segment but um, your, your thoughts tonight uh, well my heart goes out to Hunter's dad and his entire family but again I applaud him for not giving up as he mentioned uh, rewards uh, do help they've been known to you know encourage people to talk someone out there knows something so you're right to make those assumptions and also um, we don't need to give up on the roommate uh, as you mentioned it's a possibility that this wasn't even about Hunter but he was certainly just defending himself as he had the right to do when that individual pulled that trigger all right. Trevor Randall, Jason Jensen, thank you both so much. Uh, Charlie Good, again, we appreciate you uh, coming on tonight. We'll continue to stay on this story. And uh, hopefully someday we're talking about an arrest and an indictment and a first appearance. And we'll get ready for the trial.